Now I'm just wearing this summer's yes. Bin Man outfit <laughs> <laughs> from the Tramps collection. Yeah. And we're just waiting for. Uh, oh, there's a portaloo there. There you go, it's handy, isn't it? I wasn't here last time. What's the date? Let's see. The 10th of June. We're waiting for Kenneth to arrive from City Electrical Factors because Kenny has for us 100 metres of uh, 35 mil 2 core SWA. It's going to be heavy, man. I know, I don't know how we're going to get off the van. I don't think Kenny knows either. Which we're going to use to connect the main house to the outbuilding. Look back on that, I sort of melt into the colour of the van. Oh, yeah. I could do like a green screen thing, a chroma key, yeah. and just have your, your head floating <laughs> above it. Uh, we've gone for 35 mil because we've done the, the cable calcs, which uh, maybe I'll show on screen here now, which ought to give us a voltage drop within specification. We've gone for a two core cable because we're going to be putting an earth rod on it. We measured it, didn't we? It's about 70 odd metres, 70 to 80 metres yeah. from the front of the house to the building. Yeah. So we're not going to export the PME over to there, we're going to stick yeah, it on a rod. Sorry. And we've also got coming, which is quite exciting because we haven't used it before, 100 metres of armoured oh, uh, Cat 5, yeah. yeah, Cat 5, Cat 6, can't remember what it is now. Uh, we have obviously done data to outbuildings before, often in a duct, usually with exterior Cat 6, but this is the first time we've done it in uh, SWA, an SWA armoured data installation, and again the reason for that is just because uh, we're going under, this will all be trenched out, we're going under a driveway here and it is quite a long run and it's one of those where once it's in we want it to stay in and to never have to worry about it again. And I just think a bit of standard exterior Cat 6 through a duct might be a bit pants. Yeah. But if it's armoured we're alright. Oh, no. No. Oh, I would have let down at somebody else. Now originally we measured it from over behind the white van there, that corner of the house across up to there at about 77, 77 metres, 77 and uh, so thank you for the blow job on that one, Nigel. Uh, did you get it out from between no, your I teeth at the I end? I think you I won that one. <laughs> the route's now changed because it, the driveway's going to be quite hard to dig up, so they're now going to go across the lawn down there, and then we'll take it across the front of the house. Yeah. So I had to remeasure to get to the back of the house where we need to terminate it. We are very close to 100 metres, so. I don't think there's going to be much left over. And of course, 35 mil uh, two core, it's it's an expensive old game. We're talking about sort of nine, ten quid a meter, I think, if I remember rightly. It might be more than that. It's basically, this is over 900 quids of armoured turning up here today with the two reels. So you don't want to be paying out for any more than you need to be. But we've gone for a, an even hundred, and we ought to be able to work with that. Also, where Nigel's standing, we'll be splicing into the 35 mil two core at this point to provide a breakout potentially for some lighting across the edge of the driveway there so we'll have to Move consider that no i was always on the cards was it yeah they mentioned at the beginning they wanted some lights over over on the side of the driveway here so we'll get the feed to here eventually break into it and then whatever obviously there's not much we're doing here today it's just being delivered yep because there's no trench but they don't want to dig the trench until they got the cable. It's a chicken and egg thing, kind of. But once the cable's here, they can commit to digging the trench. Because they want to dig it and backfill it quickly, because obviously half the bloody driveway is unusable yeah. until it's filled. So, um, how are we thinking about fusing down for lights? I haven't thought about it at all yet. <laughs> but obviously we've got, to, uh, we've got to feed here. Yeah. This is all based on a, a 40 amp feed. I mean, the, the whole house is only 100 amps, so 40 amps isn't based on demand. It's just based on giving them a, a fat feed out to the outbuilding so they can do whatever they want with it in the future. They won't be using anything like that for their demand. But uh, here we will have to break into it and put some kind of, put, obviously put something in. Yeah, where's the lighting going? Is it just going down the drive or is it wrapped side on the side? No, it, it, it won't be any further than that hedge. Right. Again, it's, it's not been designed yet, so it, this is just a, oh, we, we'd like some lighting here. you just got to think about what they're going to be doing yeah. in the future, haven't you? And in the yeah. future, if they say we want lights here... Could have some sort of IP-rated board. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll, have, somewhere. we'll have something suitable somewhere. I mean, we could, this could be years down the line. Goodness knows when they're going to ask for that, do they? Yeah. Come on, Kenny, where are you? Yeah. Here he is. There he is. On his own. Oh, 
Yeah. Morning, Kenny. Yeah, morning, David. They're going to get that off now, aren't you? What normally happens when you deliver something like this, Ken? It normally comes on a thicker drum, and I just drop it off the back. Well, I'll move this one. Yeah, I'll take it. Brilliant, well played. <laughs> <laughs> it's over 100 kilos. Well, this is 600 kilos. Oh, well, there you go. It's... We're just about to find that out. Brilliant. I've got my leg in the way here at the moment. Have you? I'll get it out of the way. Okay. <laughs> she on? Perfect. Well, that was, uh, that was easier than expected. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So we were going to fuck your van up there, Kenny. <laughs> when do you think you'll dig the trench? Well, now that uh, this is here, I can sort of... Uh, Spade out. <laughs> this funny guy, I mean, I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can get hold of uh, the guy who digs trenches. Yeah. Ooh. Crunch. Alright. Held together? Yep. Let's pop that one in the uh Yeah. In the office side. Well, we've got to get on with your dado stuff, I suppose, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think. Oh, you were plastering first, weren't you? Yeah, Harley's coming along. Could be this weekend. I'm jolly good. It's your delivery now there, you paid for it didn't you? So you may as well take that. Pleasure doing business. What? Good lad, you've got a work experience girl with us. Mm -hmm. so tell us tell us why you want to be an electrician work experience girl. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's not my dad does. My dad's a superhero. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to be an electrician. You know okay. I mean? But it's the, the most noble cause on the planet. Why the hell would I want to do that? To the top. You've got plumber at the bottom, <laughs> electrician at the top. And in between, you've got everything builders else and in chitties. between. Yeah, but no one respects the people who do. Cables being trenched in on Wednesday, apparently. I believe it when I see it. I was going to say no one respects plumbers, but I don't think you do either. No. No. One wants to respect the plumbers. And you were saying that you can't stand that nice smells of fags because there's a dirty bastard. It's your world. Well, <laughs> I can't help it. Addictions. We've all got them. When are they going to get the shitty driveway sorted? Well, they can't, they're in the trench. That's why they're keen to. Um, that's not creepy at all. It's kind of all about. There's a dead body in that one. Oh, jeez. I'm not sure it's quite supposed to be like that. Oh, that's bad. That Hunger Games thing. Someone's just made a scarecrow there and put a Superman shirt on it, that's it. <laughs> that's, uh, that's off the Goonies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, look at this guy. Okay, now I'm getting freaked out. Do you reckon we're going to get killed here today? Well, great day to come village on the back. Come out with their flaming torches. Jesus. Is there a reason you brought me out on this day? <laughs> yeah, that's not weird at all. <laughs> I have no what idea what you're saying. What you Some effort's gone into so, that. This is how it works in a village, Dave. <laughs> she's worth viewing. Do. Don't you think she's worth viewing? I think she, she's better than Superman around the corner. Oh. <laughs> it's not Superman, it's just someone with a What's Superman his name? Shirt. I don't Off know. the Goonies. Um, you should know, you're youth. We've got work experience youth with this today. Or oh, Munch or. Why is Bo to see it? Ah. Who's it meant to My history's a bit rusty. Bo to see uh, and the, the skillage here, I mean, what's going on with this? Did you make this? Hillary did, is that the plough? Ah, it's meant to be the chariot. Yes. So, who's going to see it? I don't know, anyone who 
see this? We're number 23 on the on the brochure. Oh, right. Oh, it's, it's all judged and stuff, is it? Yes. Yeah. See, this is why you need to get a decent career, so you don't end up as a weirdo in a village. <laughs> You're getting a lot out of this work experience. Yeah. No, I'm not getting nothing. Just started fitting out the workshop. I say workshop, it, it's, it's only after two sockets in here. We're going to be putting in some Excite 1800mm battens, LED battens, for some decent illumination. Nigel's been shaping some PVC conduits, we're going to be pulling it all through in conduit in here. And then we've got the office to do next door. But it's going to be, hopefully, 48 hours from now, there'll be a trench all the way down there with our armoured in it. Personally, I believe it when I see it. 48. I think it'd be 72. Yeah, but you were never very good with measuring things, were you, Mike? Can you explain what you're doing? You're the director. Yeah, sure, why not? I put up some neat conduit <laughs> containment. Lovely job, isn't it? There's one or two rough bits which Nigel was responsible for. <laughs> we're using these. Um, Excite LED battens, we've used them before, haven't we, Nige? Yes. From cities. Good brightness on them, aren't they? Yeah. Good spread. Different sizes, these are the 1800 mil ones. And uh, what we're going to do uh, over there is our board, which is where we'll be running our lighting and power from. And uh, we're also, as you can see, sticking uh, an SPD. Uh, power is going to be delivered to the centre of the room here, it's going to come off this piece here and somehow drop down to the centre of the room, but we're not quite sure on how that's going to happen yet. Because this is all just all being done on the fly really, isn't it? No help. And uh, yes, Lu Lucy did all the wiring and the containment. In a three way on that. Yeah. Nigel's just having a fag as as he's been doing all morning. Fagging a cuppa. Hard work being you, isn't it, Nige? Well, as I've done everything else, except for talk to the camera and put the lids on. I think uh, I deserve it. You know how he takes credit for everything. What can I say? He pays the wages. I'll let him have it. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to have a second containment coming off there now, passing over the top and through a, a hole into next door. Oh. And we'll be putting some kind of dado solution in here. We're not quite sure how that's going to work yet. The trouble with this place was it was all boarded out before they thought about the electrics, otherwise we'd have had first fix in here and... Yeah, we could have had it embedded. Yeah, but it is what it is. Well that's us finished pissing around with containment. Now we're going to get the earth rod in. As usual Nigel is the man with the rod. It's another fat one. Again out in the sticks we reckon a good reading. Last one we did, we got, what did we get? I said 30, uh, you yeah. said 60, and it was about 57, wasn't it? Yeah. So what number are you going for this time? Uh, I'll tell you what, for this particular soil, I'm going to go down. I'm going to go to 30. Well, it, it's, yeah, I mean, it's last time it had been dry for about a month, yeah. hadn't it? This is we did that hot tub. But it's been raining a lot since. Yeah. So we're on damp ground. You're, you're going for what? What are you saying? 30? 30. I'm going to say 31. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see who wins this one.
Well, that was a right stiff one there. Mm, stiff rod. Of course, we won't know the resistance for a while yet because we've got no power out here. We've got no power yet. The trench is being dug tomorrow. Yeah, that's, uh, that's quite a good one. You can feel it. Just to reiterate again, so say for Pete comments, Nigel's using his SDS with a just a socket end on it, isn't it? An SDS adapter on it. The only reason the tape's there is the little ball has given up. So it just holds them together. And just gives it some hammer time into the ground. Yeah. So uh, it might be, uh, well it will be a few days before we can verify whether that's enough. Whether it's any good, but I mean come on, we're out in the middle of fucking nowhere here. The Oh, I can tell you just from that soil that we're going in. That's good that's tight good ground. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be. Um, obviously, it could be as high as 1,667 ohms for a 30 milliamp R C D if you divide a touch voltage of 50 volts by um, 30 milliamps. Then you get a maximum resistance of 1,667 ohms, which is in table 50 whatever of the uh, regs. Obviously anything below 200 ohms is desirable because they say 200 ohms or above could be a bit unstable. But I reckon that my prediction of 31. I think I'm going to be bang on with, all right, I'll give two numbers, 29 to 30. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be bang on there, you know. I've just got a feel for the soil. <laughs> <laughs> the only fucking soil you'll normally feel is the stuff you're pulling out of your undercrackers. That ain't me, that's the wife that does that. <laughs> What do you reckon, Martian? I reckon it's a long, skinny hole. Mm. It's uh, very neatly done. And uh, we did that in half a day. A couple of shovels. Yeah, a piece of piss, wasn't it? You put the effort in. <laughs> it pays, pays off. Now I'm just putting an insulated enclosure into here. And we're going to be terminating our SWL onto that. Um, we were going to terminate directly onto the board originally. But we're going to earth the armour from the PME end, from the house end. Because there's no RCD protection on it at that end. So if there's a direct short line to armour, we're reliant on the MCB operating. And if it's earthed from the rod end, then the fault current won't be great enough to trip the breaker. The other option, of course, is to put an RCD at the source of the installation but I don't think it's a good idea to have an RCD all the way over there which trips off the power to here so we want to keep the RCD protection local to here and the overcurrent protection at the far end for the overcurrent protection to work effectively we have to have a lower earth fault loop resistance than the rod's going to give us if that makes sense so we're not terminating directly onto the board we're terminating onto an insulating enclosure and then bringing the tails into the board we're going to get that in and connected this afternoon so that we know what slack we've got on the arm and can get it in the trench because I want to start backfilling the trench as soon as pos. So I'd better stop fucking yakking and uh, help the old man here, otherwise he'll be at it all day. Do you reckon they need some more support at the top? I don't know, there's a big gap there. Yeah. Well, we're knackered, aren't we, Nige? Knackered we are. Knackered. Oh, it's getting too old for this shit. Right, Nigel's pulled that in. We've got to get some more cleats. See, I've gave us the wrong size cleats this morning. But it's terminated onto the plastic enclosure and it goes up into our board there. We'll have a closer look at that when we finish the board. It's still missing a couple of its RCBOs at present. We've also made a bit of a change because he's asked for a metal clad socket to go next to the board. So we're going to run the socket circuit for here through that. The flex conduit passing through it contains the earthing to the rod. Obviously we still don't have a measurement for the rod because we have no power here. We were kind of hoping to have this enlivened today, but... Oh, fucking hell. Getting this lot pulled in the trench was a bit of a game, wasn't it? It's been more trying to find a route round. The All the way down. Sandline trench. Our man over there is backfilling it as we speak. And obviously he's going to fit it to a certain level and then we're going to stick in the caution electrical cable below marking tape before he uh, 
fills it completely. That tape's going to go at about a spade's depth, just so that any motherfucker digging it in the future who happens to come across it will hopefully yeah. stop digging before they hit our cables. We've got two cables in here, 200 meter reels. The reels there are ready for the bonfire. Uh, obviously, one of them was our 35 mil two court and then you've got this fella here you want the camera set much it's just it's actually uh, armored it is armored armored ethernet yeah now i've not actually installed this before we don't get involved too much these days with data just lay these ends out so we can see it is actually an armored ethernet it is a 100 meter reel the run is for the armored for the data cable is slightly shorter than it's going to be for the 35 mil SWA. So it probably won't be quite 100 meters by the time it's finished. What about you, Naj? I'm fucking knackered, mate. Totally. Ready for a bath or a shower or something. Oh, well, it is July. It is. I'm joking. It's only half past two, for fuck's sake. Yeah, you just. You get to a certain age, don't you, Naj? You just can't hack the shit anymore. We need to be sat behind a desk at our ages and not fighting with armoured cables. It's a young person's game, isn't it? It is. We still haven't postcreted in our uh, earth rod. That's got to be done. I have to make sure we come with some postcrete next time. So, um, today's Thursday. We'll be back. Next week. Yep. Same time, same channel. <laughs> and by the time we come back, this trench should have been filled back over. We've already got one end of the SWA terminated. The hard part's getting the next end in because we can't drill under the porch to get the cable in place and we can't get. We have to get to the other side of the house, the arse end of the house. He's actually, uh, the homeowner's actually hired a drilling company to come and get the holes in for us just because we lack. Well, that could drill that side yeah. a little bit. We need a... It's got to be, what, two, three metres long? A, 30, a three metre, 35 mil yeah. drill bit. And that just ain't happening. We spent 40 quid on a fucking one metre, 25 mil drill bit today, which has been of no use to us, really, has it? Because it hasn't got us anywhere. No. It's the house end at the moment. This is where our... Armoured sprouting out the comms cable is going to go around the side of the house to where the broadband is. And the big fella is going to end up passing along the front to get to the other side of the porch where it's got to go in through a void at the bottom of the house to the back where the consume unit is. I'll tell you what, Martian, you'd never know that a couple of days ago there was a trench there, would you? Hardly. No. Hello. Right, Hills. We just got here ourselves. Oh, have you? Yes. Yeah, I'm afraid so. <laughs> People seem to like you, I don't know why. <laughs> this is trench. Yeah, we were just uh, <laughs> just admiring the backfilling. It's uh... it sort of disappears here, doesn't it? Loves backfilling. We did down there, Nige. We <laughs> <laughs> into a hole. We just came looking for. Excuse the lawnmower noise. We just came looking for our uh, loop of 35 mil that got trenched in. And I just found it by falling into the hole that it's in. <laughs> and now he's stuck. Look past me knee. <laughs> oh, that's a deep hole. <laughs> when you're ready, mate. Oh, Thanks for your out. There's the loop. Yeah, there's the loop. It's down there. Look. <laughs> so we've got a, a loop of a few metres of that 35 mil to break into. In the future, if they decide what they want us to do, so, <coughs> so that we can put something there to tap off, which is getting very noisy, tap off to feed lights on the driveway. Which, of course, knowing us, we're doing 12 volts because we're 12 volt assholes. Marvellous. You know that that's an operational microwave? Yeah, they had it on the journey, didn't the they? The bloody. The roofers, for some reason, carry this microwave around with them because they have a microwave lasagna for lunch every day. They just leave it in the garden. And they, they just leave it in the garden, in the rain and everything, and it's bulletproof, it just carries on working. It's a bit, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Anyway, there's no gap behind that bush. You can see how everyone else has got it. Uh, th this is Nigel doing his, can't be done, 
The nine likes to find reasons it ain't why going behind that bush at the bottom. Why a job can't be completed. It either goes up over the top or it comes around the front. Can't be done. Or we remove How's it go, the Nige? bush. How's it go? <laughs> yeah, so um, we're slinging this in for now. Obviously, there's there's a lot of work to be done around here, so we're going to leave some some slack. Uh, it's just it's just basically going on top of the ground behind all this greenery for now uh, uh, we are going to take it through and connect it up so they've got power but there will be a time when the scaffolding goes and all this greenery gets tidied up and cleared out and it, it all gets sorted out properly because usually when Nigel says something can't be done it usually can it's just he's a lazy twat you in a bad mood Nigel pissed him off now the homeowners had these holes professionally drilled to get the cables into place, or the cable, because our long drill just uh, wasn't up to it. So I paid a, uh, a boring company. Very much so. Who uh, only charged a ton, which wasn't too bad. They turned up a couple of days after they were booked. They turned up on a Saturday. Did it as a cash and hand job, I think, but they got, got through under, under the porch there. And they got through into the, the house. 35 mil hole, I think you said, which will be big enough for this. So all we've got to do now is lug this cable in and uh, bish boosh. To get this cable through, Mr. Marsh, from the front of the house to the rear, we actually have a route. Yes. See that vent there? If you pop that off, <sighs> that grill rather, whatever it is, we need to get some light down there, don't we? There's, uh, that actually goes from the front of the house all the way through under the stairs and we can pick that up in the boiler room on the other side. There's a grill out there and these, these pipes down here, they're all redundant. They're, yes. they're actually cut off. You can see them angle ground off at the other end. They're old, I don't know, old heating pipes or something, I don't know. Yeah, definitely, definitely caught solid end. Right, I'll go and have a look inside. Now I'm just trying to shove our cable through the hole there. <laughs> it should bring us into here. <laughs> right, right, hold it, hold it, hold it. Back a bit. Okay, just hold it. Uh -huh. This ain't going to be any fun. See that grate at the back there? Oh, Open, yeah. That's the other end of. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We need a small child to lay the I know. Well, it was alright when we first looked at this, but someone's stuck a bloody water tank in here since. There's a picture. Oh. My child bearing hips are stuck. How do you want me to stick this? <laughs> Let me have them. You need a torch down there? No, 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 it's like it's Just it looks like it's going underneath the wall. <laughs> That doesn't look like it's going to come out any time soon. You can see it's... Can I have your torch? The Ryobi work light's still down at the other end. Oh jeez, it's a money boat. Do you want me to try and send it down? You can try, yeah. Trouble is it's sort of uh, buckling up. Right, well I can send a rod down here. Let me to get some rods. Yeah. Because I can put it across the top, there's a hole in the top so we wouldn't have to build, pull the grate up. Alright. No sign of that at all. Can't see it. Negative, negative. Can you see any light from my end? Shining on the road, moving about. 
I'm gonna go and get a camera so I can see what's going on here. Stand by one. Right, I can see the rod. Yeah, there's a low level obstruction. It's basically a support for the pipes. And you're hitting that. It's too far away for me to do anything with. No, you're gonna hit a. You're gonna hit brickwork. <laughs> That's the obstruction. Ah, yes, I see. That, that support. Can you on the see side. the rods. So? They're on the other side of that. Right. But it doesn't yeah. matter how many rods you add. You're gonna hit that. Well, no, I can come over it. I know how to come over it. That's, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. The cable is already over it. But right. I don't know if there's more brickwork at the end there that it's. Well, yeah, because um, I was encountering an obstruction within that first three rods which I've managed to get it over. But I can get over that. See, that to me looks like it's getting caught up in that corner. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the rods would be helpful, isn't it? If we can get the rods over without actually wrapping around one of them. I don't know how clear this side is. Right. It looks like there's something there, isn't there? Yeah, it's Attention. Hold, it, hold it still. That hole at the end, isn't it? Yeah. No. Okay. The way I'll get it over that obstruction, you see, is just using one of those long, flexible ones. Cause these, because it just <coughs> pushes up over the top as you push it in. But your rods are down there somewhere. Oh, you just see it there? It's underneath that pipe. There it is. Oh yes, yes, yes. So they need to come up to this. One of these will push against it, and it'll lift it up. You see. We can, but try. We can. I'll take this, shove it on the end, and this will push me there to hopefully push against obstruction. Right. Yes, you fucking dancer. Clear to proceed, take it very slowly. Fucking <laughs> 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 I feel like I'm wanking off a prisoner in an oubliette. I'm bunching up at this end, are we hitting something? You know what, I would, thank you, yeah, Henry. Would you like some tea? Yes, nice down. refreshing cup of tea. Don't yeah. make him one. No, no, I'm going to. Bye, mate. I'm still stuck. I'm coming in to you. He's coming in. <sighs> you can hear it. Hear that? Right. Just. But somehow needs lifting up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how am I going to do that? Have you got. You've got one that's uh, grappling hook, ain't you? Mm hmm. I don't know if it'd be any good because I'm only a couple of rods out. I'm wondering if one of them on the end of that shoved in under the other rods because that'll. Hold it under the rods, you know. 
This is quite the glamorous position you're in down there, Nigel. It is, I can't see anything. Nothing at all. This is the grate. The grate's in the way. Can we not get the grate off? Uh, <laughs> get me a bigger jemmy, I might be able to. Do you want me to go and get the big one out of the van? Yeah, Christ, hurry up, this ain't comfortable. Right, right. I'll go as quickly as I can. I can find the black one, I've got the red one. The black one would probably be better. I don't know where it is. Barely fucking moving here. That was a game, wasn't it, Martian? It was. It's taken a bit of time, but we have managed to pull the cocksucker through. Now she blows, and that's all the fucking snack we got on it. 100 metres. 100 metres gone, just like that. Yeah, and Jesus Christ, we weren't too far too far off with it were because that trench has been filled in now so uh, can you imagine if that were like a couple of meters too short that would have been us royally fucked well, i don't know we'd have to torpedo it in the front wouldn't we or something oh uh, yeah oh, oh can you yeah. bet can you imagine it that's just enough meat in there for us to play with so we um we're gonna get this cut off now we have to drill a hole through the end of it and attach a uh, a rod with a bit of a bit of copper wire just to pull it through. But uh, wowzers! So we'll connect that up tomorrow. Someone's going to have a fun time in that little cubby hole tomorrow, aren't they? I wonder who that's going to be. <laughs> I'm not sure I can work in these tight conditions. I'm used to much looser holes. That was fun, wasn't it? Did you know the Scarecrow competition, they didn't even get placed? They didn't even get placed? No. You see, I, compared to some of them, I think a lot of effort went into that. Mm. So, um, maybe, maybe it was uh, too high brow. Maybe. They're a bit chavvy around here. Aren't they? <laughs> Perhaps they should have gone with some reality TV star or something. Yeah. Oh well, I don't know with the big tits, they could have made that one into um, Jordan. Yeah, Katie Price, something like that. I have to excuse all the noise going on, they're polishing the floor in there. We're going to um, get this cable live today, hopefully. Now we haven't quite got enough to work with it here, which is what we expected. We never expected this to go to the board, did we, Nigel? No. We were always going to terminate in, in here onto something smaller. I was kind of hoping it'd be more like here or over there. Though. Yeah, we were We were hoping to have an extra meter or so to play with in here. That's what we've got. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to stick it on a resin-filled torpedo joint. And we're going to put, uh, we're going to go from 35mm down to 10mm. The 35mm was just there to combat the voltage drop across the distance between here and the outbuilding. Yeah. The final 3-4 metres uh, can be a lower CSA just to get us from here into the board without us having to fight with the 35mm core. Yeah. So we're going to do, go down to 10mm. We've got a 40 amp breaker in the board. They don't need 40 amps out there, it's just 40 amps for future expansion really, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, fucking hell. I'm not going to be using anything like that out there, but we're, we're, we're making sure that we've, we're sending a beefy supply over there so that whatever happens in the future, there's a beefy supply over there. Uh, in the torpedo itself, obviously it comes with butt crimps. We're not going to be able to butt crimp down from a 35 to a 10. So our solution, our super solution, is going to be this arrangement where we use oh, Christ, crimp lugs to reduce the CSA, we're going to bolt them together within the torpedo, fill it with a, a resin so that it hardens, and once it's hardened obviously those screws are never going to fucking undo again. And then we're going to, we've also got 10 metres of 10 mil, although we perhaps only need half that, but that would allow us then to pull that back 
under the floor to a certain extent so the resin joint will end up sat under there somewhere never to be seen again uh, but nor should you need to no. as long as we make sure that it's all done and tested before we commit to pouring the resin so we're going to make off the two ends of the arm. Can you be able to grab that 10 mil coming oh, out there? It's, it's hitting the expansion yeah. tank. If you can, are we going to be able to curl it around or do we need another I hole? I need to bend it a bit. Start get it started. If only there were a bender in the cupboard. Yes, he's holding the camera now, so he's busy. feels like I'm fighting against some of the others. I'll go push it from the other side. Anyway, the turbo is coming in there. And yeah, we're going to get that shelf. spliced off. I'll go do the dado while Nigel did the splicing. Right. The plan in here is da -da 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 dado. We're going to have a dado trunking all the way down this wall and all the way across that wall. It's about seven and a half metres of the stuff. Or she blows. Wired in singles, I think. Just because I think uh, 20 nerds a bit of overkill, really, for inside data. Obviously, we've got to make sure the IP rating of the thing is maintained. But uh, should be able to do that. So what I'm going to get. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my joist magnet on the walls here to pick up where the nails are, so that I can find where the studding is in order to um, screw this directly onto the wall. It's a bit of a shame really because the homeowner just didn't get us in before the plastering went up. So we never had an opportunity to first fix this but had there been a bit more notice on it, we, instead of using a surface mounted solution like Dodo we could have got uh, all the accessories sunk into the wall. No lighting because of course you know well, there's a freaking ceiling up there now, isn't there? so we can't pull any cables in, but that's right because he just wants to use floor standing lights anyway, so fair enough. Right, let's get this wall marked out. So while I've been doing the complicated bit, I've just been on the easy task of splicing those SWAs together. Before we fill the resin joint though, we want to make damn sure that he hasn't fucked it up. So we're going to put a loop on the SWA each call at the house end and then take a continuity reading at this end and then remove those loops and do an IR test. And if we get the same continuity at this end on each call and no IR issues between line neutral or line neutral earth we should be safe to resin the motherfucker up. So this is the 10 mil end that will go into the board. Uh, we've got a three core here because it is don't do two core 10 mil SWA off the shelf. But obviously it's a two core going down the garden. So now I'm just taking the black here and connecting it to the armor at the torpedo just to give us that extra little bit of conductivity down the earth path but from the torpedo it's only the SWA that's earth but obviously we're not using the earth at the other end because it's going into a rod. Before I grip my metrol and twist its nipples let's recap on what we've got. There's a 10 mil three core steel wired armoured cable from DB1 at the house. We rocked up with 10 meters of the stuff so let's run with that as a nice round figure. Spliced onto that is 100 meters of 35 mil two core SWA. When I stick my tester on at the far end, I must be happy that the numbers are reading right, as once the resin is poured into our joint between the two cables, it's game fucking over for uncocking anything Nigel's cocked up in connecting. I need to know those terminations are tight, our continuity is low, and our insulation resistance is high. If we find fault after pouring, well that's a 30 quid joint kit we've got to saw off and bung in the bin before having to start again and let me tell you that's the kind of mistake you only make once. Yes I do have past experience of thinking oh I'm sure it's all okay and proceeding with the pour only to discover afterwards that a mistake has been made now locked away for all time in a hardened resin tomb. The 10 mil cable has a dedicated circuit protective conductor and with loops placed on at the source end between line CPC and neutral CPC we can use table I1 of the on-site guide to get a value of resistance for the earth fault loop path of this cable between the source and the splice joint. 
that is the resistance of the 10 mil line wire plus the resistance of the 10 mil CPC. Of course the armour is also connected to the CPC and forms a conductive parallel path of its own but we'll negate that here as its effect will be negatable. Table I1 lists the resistance of a 10 mil copper core at 20 Celsius as 1.83 milliohms per meter, or 0.00183 ohms per meter if we shuffle that fucking decimal point around. We've got 10 meters down the line wire and 10 meters back along the CPC. So if we take our resistance, multiply it by 10 meters, and multiply it by two cores, we get 0.0366 ohms of resistance. If one were to place a calibrated and nulled test instrument at the end of the 10 mil cable and take an R1 plus R2 reading, then 0.03 or 0.04 would be the rounded figure one would expect to be returned on the display. So far, so good. But here's where it gets trickier. Our second cable has a CSA of 35 square millimetres. OK, table I1 gives us a value of 0.524 milliohms per meter for that size, which is 0 0.000524 ohms when converted per meter. Multiply that by 100 meters and you have the resistance of the copper line wire. But there's no dedicated CPC in this cable. The return path to the joint is via the steel armor only. Well, that shouldn't be a problem. I'll just see what the on-site guide and BS7671 have to say about the resistivity of steel and... Yeah, good luck with that. You won't find it in the blue books. Instead, the IET do their common trick of sticking it in another publication entirely. So wave goodbye to 30 quid and say hello to Guidance Note 6, Protection Against Overcurrent. This paperbacked cocksucker gives you the following formula. Resistance of phase and protective earthing equals RCLPH plus 1.1 RA times L1 where RCLPH, which, true to form because nobody the IET can proofread, so it's printed with a typing error in GN6, is our line conductor resistance per metre, which we know to be 0 0.000524 ohms for our 35mm brown wire. You'll recall we got that figure just now from table I1 of the on-site guide. 1.1 is a coefficient which takes into account the magnetic effect of steel armour. This is a fixed value, so nothing to argue about here. L1 is the circuit length, in our case 100 metres, at least for the fat cable snaking off to the outbuilding. And RA is the DC resistance of armour at working temperature, for which GN6 tells you to go fuck yourself and look up in British Standard 5467. Cheers. 30 quid to extract that formula kicking and screaming from the IET boffins and what? I'm supposed to pay out another 246 beer tokens to find a missing factor? You just watch how fast I reach for my goddamn Amex card. Fortunately, BAT cables, whose SWA we're installing, have technical data on their website and give a figure of 2.5 ohms per kilometre at 20 Celsius for our 35mm cable. So if we divide that by 1000, then we should have a resistance per metre of 0 0.0025 ohms. Remember, this is the 20 Celsius figure, not the working temperature figure. But it's a dead test, so let's go with it. If we cram all this bullshit into this fucking formula, it spits out a figure of 0 0.3274 ohm for the 35mm cable, which, I don't know, sounds alright to me. So that's the figure for the 100 meter 35mm section. Add the 0 0.3274 ohm to the 0 0.0366 ohm of the 10mm cable, and if the maths is correct, we should see a test result somewhere around 0 0.36 ohm between line armour and between neutral armour. That's if the maths is correct, but this is as far as I can take it, because I honestly don't know if I've interpreted the formula correctly. I'm testing dead and assuming 20 Celsius, so I haven't applied temperature coefficients to account for operating temperature, which I think means a ZS, once some current has warmed it up, would perhaps be nearer the 0.4 ohm mark. Reactance is also a thing for cables with a CSA of 25 square millimetres and above, which I haven't accounted for here, and I don't think I'm supposed to for a plain continuity test but I'm not sure. The wording of GN6 is hopeless. Maybe it's just me and my loose grasp of our mother tongue. After all, I like to lace my presentations with ribald references and foul language, something which is often cited as being indicative of a person possessing a weak vocabulary. Although, personally, I think that's a load of fucking bollocks. Mm.
Not that I'm making any kind of claim of proficiency in English. I was awarded only a grade D in my English GCSE way back in 1990, though that may have been largely down to my messing around in class along with Johnny Powers trying to look up the girls' skirts and endlessly graffitiing textbooks with numerous cock and balls motifs sometimes accompanied with dealy boppers, something that once caused my Spanish teacher, upon opening a school publication to a page with a particularly erect member jazzing off over various paragraphs, to exclaim aloud, Oh, for goodness sake, why must you boys continually draw penises over everything? Which elicited much merriment in all our tiny minds because Miss had said a rude word. Sadly, that's about the only thing I remember from Spanish classes, except for one other incident, and I know I'm going off topic here, uh, where I actually retain the phrase for the lift is out of order. I've honestly no idea why that one stuck, but on a family holiday in Mallorca in 1987, my sister and I stepped into the hotel lift, only for the non-English speaking cleaner to try and indicate to us that it had been disabled as she was about to wash it. To this day, I regret not uttering the phrase Alison Shaw no Funciona, the only Spanish I knew, through fear of mispronouncing it, as I may just have. Although, had I said it, it would have knocked the socks off my sister as I coolly pretended Spanish was piss, and I knew it all, really. A boring and irrelevant story, I know, but the gods were aware that's all I'd taken from Spanish classes at school, and they gifted me a situation where I could use it. When the hell will that ever happen again? I guess that says something about always seizing the moment, although on the other hand it's probably not worth impressing a girl that much if you can't get into her knickers anyway. But faulty lifts and asking for a beer remain my only grasp of Spanish, being the bright red beer-bellied ignorant bastard Brit abroad that I am on holiday. But I digress, and although my GCSE grade D may have highlighted my inattention in my immature years more than my actual inability to gain a grasp on my native English, and I like to think I'm not utterly hopeless when reading a passage in a technical manual, Guidance Note 6, like a lot of other IET publications, is just unintelligible to me on this point. It waffles on about coefficients and correction factors without being clear on how they're supposed to be applied by your average wanker. I suspect the likes of Sparky Ninja or John Ward could interpret it off the bat, but you shouldn't have to be a bona fide wiring regs genius to be able to interpret this shit. All I'm trying to prove here is the resistance of the earth fault loop path of an armoured cable so I can verify what my tester will be showing me when I wang it on at the far end. I shouldn't have to buy a 30 quid book to get the basic formula, only to then find it written in such a way as to cast doubt I would ever be applying it correctly and I shouldn't have to find data on the resistance of steel from an expensive British standard or a manufacturer. The point of the fucking on-site guide is to collate and translate this kind of rubbish for the masses, and this basic data should be in an appendix there, so that any spark using the armour of an SWA as an earthed path, instead of having a dedicated CPC, can verify what ballpark number their sodding ohmmeter ought to be returning on a dead test. And I know it's all very tedious listening to me going off on one again about the IET, but this genuinely boils the bubbly foam off my shit. These publications seem to be deliberately written to obfuscate the very information they're supposed to convey. The information I fucking paid for! Why is that? Does someone at the IET get a hard-on because they and their clique of engineering bores all know what it means? Is this supposed to impress me? Am I to think they're somehow superior for being able to write something so inaccessible to the average prat on the street? Fuckers, or at least I think they are. Who knows, maybe I'm just overthinking it and there's an easier way to work all this out that I'm missing. Because it was doing my head in, I turned to two other sources. One was the NICEIC helpline, who unfortunately didn't throw much light on how the wording of GN6 was to be interpreted. They effectively said there were too many factors and to go with the measured result. We need to keep in mind that you are carrying out a practical measurement in the field and consider instrument accuracy, contact resistance between the test leads and sample, accuracy of the cable length measurement, effects of ambient and soil temperature at the time of measurement. Also, the 35mm cable protected by a 40 amp overcurrent device is unlikely to achieve an operating temperature of 80 degrees, and so the 1.27 temperature correction factor is probably not applicable. Given all of that, the possible errors in the measurement exceed the adjustments that may be considered for magnetic stroke temperature effects, and we should verify on the practical measurement. Or to put it another way, fuck the maths. 
Cheers, guys. And I know you know your onions, but really, I wanted to know why Result X on my ometer was what it was, and what GN6 was clumsily trying to get across in its stuttering, spittle flecked, inelegant way. I also sought advice from Efix, as I know Joe likes to mix maths with electricity. And I was pleased that he too raised an eyebrow at the way GN6 is written. At least it's not just me reading and rereading the same damn paragraphs again and again. Joe thinks the formula as I've applied it here is correct and that correction factors are omitted for the basic dead testing, although you'd apply them to get the figure for the operating temperature, which, as NIC said, would never be reached for a 35mm core on a 40 amp breaker. Big up Joe for his assistance there. Go check out his channel at Joe Robinson Training and the wider family over at eFix2, of course, especially if you're training up for this game, because just watching the likes of Nick and Jordan fiddling with their willies on YouTube is all very well, but understanding something of the science and mathematics behind what your test instrument is showing is important. So, rant over, and who expected it to be such a mission to calculate what an earth fault loop path dead test would be for this friggin' cable run? It may as well have been the 13th labour of Heracles to verify what my metrol should be showing me. Speaking of which, let's go back to the dickheads on site and see if the ohmmeter comes anywhere near the 0.36 ohm figure my shonky maths indicates it ought to be. Right, let's see if our numbers about match. So this is where the earthing currently ends. We might have to change that metal work for a stuffing gland just to keep it insulated otherwise you've got this business again where you've got two different earthing systems in touch contact. But we've got an SWA on there for the moment, SWA gland. And if I put that on neutral and earth, what is an earth part, we should have a relatively low number despite this being over, oh shit, over a hundred, well about a hundred meters. 100 metres of 35 mil and 10 metres of 10 mil. 30, 0.37, I should get the same sort of number here. 0.35, close enough to me. I haven't got the best contact on here. Uh, Nige, can you remove the loops at that end? For insulation resistance, the loops have been removed from line armour and neutral armour back at the house. My metral, testing between open cores and armour at the outbuilding end, has a full scale deflection of 999 mega ohm, and I'm expecting a high number between line neutral, line armour, and neutral armour. It may not be perfect, as the SWA has been out in the elements in the weeks awaiting installation, and a bit of moisture will have crept in the ends there. That'll dry out once it's sealed up and starts operating, but I need to see a good high number before I'm prepared to waz on the power. Certainly something in the hundreds of millions of ohms range, if not off scale. Something line neutral. Six hundred and twenty three neutral earth. Seven hundred and eighty four line earth. Yeah, we're all right there, mate. Okay, uh, I'm going to take this up, get it uh, resined. Sound air, Mac. So we're clear to resin that off then. Ready for connection later on. There's the torpedo. So the two SWAs are braided. The lug crimps are in, joining the 35 to the 10. And once that's full of gunk, it'll never see the light of day again. Okay, our 10mm armoured is in now. We're going to do an RA reading. Nigel will incorrectly guessed, what was it, 30 ohms last week? If I'm incorrect, you're incorrect. You guessed 31. 31 or higher, I said. Oh, no, you didn't. You it's it's whoever's closest, isn't it? It's whoever's closest. Fuck off. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> you can't just take one, just one of them. No, no, hang on. Oh, you, no, that is 29 now, you know. You were closest on the... Um, I was, the... bro. I didn't go one above what you said. <laughs> <laughs> what, what can I say, mate? You've got to play the game right, haven't you? Right, OK, so... Let me just check polarity and everything. So we've got power out to here now. Obviously this board is in no way in, in a state for us to energise yet. I'll have to come tomorrow. We just keep running out of time on this thing, don't we? So I'm going to put that onto our 
earth rod. Uh, there are other things connected here, but they're not going anywhere, so there's no need for me to actually disconnect this to, to ensure I'm reading the rod and nothing else. There's no extraneous parts going into the ground or anything like that, no gas or water pipes. Ready? Right, I'm going to zoom in on that. Oh, 44.5, looks like I'm the massive winner. You're a massive You what? said 30 and I said 31, so I'm closest. <sighs> Still not bad reading for a rod though. Ignore the red light, as always, because that's just because it's, again, the tester at the moment is set up to read a, a 6 amp type B, 60898. Uh, we haven't told it it's testing a rod, so it's just failing that because 44.5 would be a fucking high number for a type B 6 amp. But 44.5 for a rod, well, it's enough to give you the rod, isn't it, Nige? Yeah. Let's compare rods. Don't look down. I think mine was more impressive. <laughs> Jolly good show. That's a damn good reading. Obviously, we're going to isolate that from the house end because we shall be leaving this probably like that overnight. We're back tomorrow to hook it all up properly. But we have power, we have power to the outbuilding at last via yes. a big fuck off cable. We've got earthing via our rod. And as I said earlier, I don't think I ever want to do another power to an outbuilding. I'm getting sick of doing them. They're just no fucking fun. No fun Especially at all. That long run with that massive piece of tape. Right, well, let's get out of here for another day then. Tomorrow is another day, and you're right here tomorrow, are you? Know, you've got yep. the day off. I'm supposed to have the day off as well, but someone's got to come and finish this shit off. The joys of running a business. Okie dokie, our dado solution is in for the most part. So it's time to do some testing before we can energise this mother. We're all in around here. I've been feraling this morning, there's my feral set. Uh, not a bad set, that. It's quite a new one to me. I haven't knocked it over and spilled it all out yet, but I'm sure it's in the post. And I've felled off all the connectors, all the connections in here, just because the stranded cable is a bit of a nose uh, to tighten up properly, but also these MCG RCBOs have a, a flying earth lead, so I've coupled that with the, the circuit earth into a ferrule that's nice and tight. Shouldn't be going anywhere. And as you can see, I've got a loop on because uh, I've already tested the socket circuit serving the store area here. Not that there's much to, to test on that so far it's only going to one socket. Uh, and the lighting, so that all got tested last week when it's put in. So it's just the sockets and the data we're going to check now. Radial circuit, 2.5 mil line, 2.5 mil CPC wired in singles. In fact, let me just show you. The singles going through, I've maintained the containment going through the wall, same up there. Because it goes in there to a high level socket, pops out down through here and through the containment into the back of the dado. I probably should have left that off to show you that, but never mind. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect the tester around each socket and what we should see obviously being a radial at 2.5mm we should see that as we go around towards the end socket the number should bob up slightly every time until we get a final reading at the end which should be indicative of our circuit length and I've just done a bit of maths 2.5mm wire has a resistance of 0.0074 ohms per metre and we've got a circuit length of around 20 odd metres going by my rough measurements which should mean we're somewhere around the 0.3 mark by the end of the circuit so it'll be interesting to see if that bears up. Let me stick the camera on the tripod and we'll, uh, we'll go around and check. This is one of those rare occasions where it'd be handy if Nigel were here because he could then hold the camera and film this thing but anyway um, I'm just going to check my leads and nulls by joining them together and yes indeed I do have a big fat zero on my display here. So let's start with the first in the chain and I'm getting 0.11 ohms. Point 0.14 0.16 
There's a pattern forming here. Oh, I've turned it on. 0.21. Let's move the camera. Point two three. Point two five. Point two six. Point two nine. And end of chain. Point three zero. Called it. That's all right, isn't it? So again, that. Seems to indicate that our circuit length is as expected. Now I'm going to do the same again between neutral earth uh, because I should get obviously exactly the same number. And obviously because it's because it's wired in singles and it's 2.5 mil for the CPC as well as 2.5 mil for the line and neutral, it's a slightly different number to the uh, to how it would be happy run it in uh, a twin in earth where the uh, the earth would have been 1.67 times smaller. So I'm just going to. Um, Swap that over and then I'll go around again and check the neutrals. Well, there we have it. We are live and away. Super stuff. I just noticed that the, the 20 amp RCBOs have a orange button and the 6 amp has a blue button. That's going to fuck with somebody's feng shui, I'm sure. But uh, anyway, there we are. That's the power to the outbuilding. The next thing I suppose I've got to do is to get the comms sorted out. So we've got our armoured Cat 6 there. It's got to get through to the office side and get terminated. Oh, it's getting a bit near beer o'clock for my liking for starting shit like that. Incidentally, if this saddle here has something like the uh, the last saddle of the, of the van look about it, well, that's because it is, and that's probably the last of the ones like that that I'll ever buy because these new ones have come out now, uh, these wraparound ones, they're still on the tool station, packs of 10, and um, they're really nice to use. I think they look better than a traditional saddle, they're less fiddly, you haven't got all the, uh, the screw bits to pop out, it's just one screw through the middle and it wraps around. I think they're great, they come in black or white, a terrific solution. Fire rated of course because they're metal, so it makes for a good, a good solution. So. Uh, these things, these old school things, well, that's the last one I'll ever have. Okay, one last thing to check is this USB socket using this Klein USB tester. This reckons it can put out 3.1 amps, so let's switch it onto a test load of 3 amps and see what it does. Yep, current 3 amps, 5 volts, pass. Let's check the second one here. There is a, if you press the load button, it does it all in uh, slightly bigger figures. I don't know why that is, but uh, 3 amps, 5 volts, 3 amps, pass. Jolly good. It's just a, a quick way of ensuring your USB sockets are good to go, so that if the customer phones up afterwards and says, Oi, my iPhone isn't charging, at least, well, at least you know it was working. I've now got the... SWA gland gunked up so that when this plastic cover is on the PME earthing isn't going to be accessible because uh, I don't want there to be a situation where you can touch that earthing point and the TT earthing point because obviously having different uh, resistances to earth there is a possibility of there being a potential difference across them and someone in simultaneous touch contact could in theory get a bit of a whack in practice probably not but um, best practice to have that so that you can't access this uh, metalwork without deliberate use of a tool or such. So that's been properly gunked on there now, which is an NICERC approved way of doing it unless you're using some kind of insulated gland to get there. But the whole point of putting this insulated enclosure on was to keep this metalwork separate from this metalwork. The footage of us connecting up the armoured comms cable seems to have been lost, but suffice to say it connects the house to the outbuilding via the same trench and is shorter than the power run. It's close to the limit for Cat 5e, and maybe fibre would have made more sense for that distance, but it'll do the do well enough. 
It terminates onto an RJ45 outlet at each end. Sorry, DHCP request successful. Looks like we're in business, old boy. Yep. Right, well, I'll leave you to set up the router. Mm -hmm. Right, all things being equal, the comms cable should now be in and live. Uh, I left Nigel over here configuring the router in the office. So he should be testing the internet now. He's got hold of the laptop. Well, he's not in there. Oh, he's in here. Oh, the internet's working now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. With the outbuilding powered up and hooked up to the interweb, there remains one more video to come for this project concerning wiring up the remodelled annex wing of the house, which was completed around last September. That's in edit now, so watch this space for more fucking boring nonsense to come. You ain't this quiet. It's always suspicious. <laughs> oh, I can't fucking get rid of it. You can taste the, uh, the curry sauce, can't you? The chilli sauce. I can taste your fucking scrambled eggs, you can. <laughs> Fucking disgusting. Open your window, you cunt. We need charcoal mass to drop down when you do that. 